and just kind of threading it out, and, uh, generally speaking. That's why there's no stories in Surah Al-Fatr. There's no stories, because stories are circumstantial, and, the, and they're based on, uh, they're giving you a scenario, so they're giving you an angle, right? Uh, Surah Al-Fatr has no stories, it's just information, it's just a way of, th the way you're looking at things. Uh, but it's very, very beautiful, because uh, it's probably, you'll see, uh, some of the most beautiful verses in the Quran will exist in it, uh, at least for me. So, Surah Al-Fatr, when it began, the way it began, if you look at the, how, look, look how we've read so far, or how things are organized or a sequence so far. The beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you who He is and why, so that you know why, 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 who you're submitting to. This is who I am, right? This is what you need to do in order to be able uh, to have the right mindset for submission. You need to do two things. You need to be someone who has the, the attitude of greatness, of gratefulness, sorry, gratitude. You have to have the attitude of gratitude. I mean, that's, that's how you look at the world, that's your mindset, you have to be someone who is grateful. And then the second thing is that you need to be someone who is not um, uh, uh, deluded uh, by, by superficial issues. You're not someone who, uh, who lacks the critical eye to see uh, what is right and wrong. You're not someone who's going to be confused or distracted by dunya or by their own actions or lacks insight. If you're someone who lacks personal insight, you say, why do you say that at the beginning? That makes more sense now. I like to kind of give the simple understanding at the beginning and let the Quran itself explain it to you. Because when we first read, or uh, don't be deluded or eluded by the, the worldly. It seems simple. But then when the ayat explained it a bit more, went into a bit more detail, what, what is talking about? Giving, giving you like the example, see the person who is, who is, uh, who, who is uh, deluded to think that the bad deeds he does are actually good deeds. How, how do you help someone like You can't help someone like that because they lack the basic uh, personal um, uh, uh, in, insight. They don't have self-insight. They don't, they don't know how to self-regulate. They don't know the difference from a good deed and a bad deed uh, in their own life because they, they've never actually critically uh, observed themselves or thought about their own actions. So you need those two mindsets in order to be uh, someone who is, who is going to be able to submit to Allah. These two things you need. You need to be grateful for being alive and for life itself. And you need to have insight, personal insight. And if you don't have, the, the, if one of those two things are missing, then, then it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. If you're going to try and submit, you're not, you're not going to do it. You're going to end up failing, or you're not going to do it right, or it's going to end up catastrophic. So this is what the, the ayat has explained to us so far, and it's, kinda, and it, and it's argued those points, uh, basically, in a very uh, systematic manner. Uh, if you remember, the two points that the, the second command, because there's two commands, like gra gratitude, gratitude and gratefulness is one command. The second command was not being deluded and, and reminding yourself, and how do you get, gain insight is by reminding yourself there's hisab, that there's akhirah. And then the two ayat come after that, talk about both those two things, insight and, and, and resurrection. That's why ayah number eight is insight and ayah ayat number nine is resurrection. It's very, just very straightforward. So nine and 10, are a bit, uh, or 10 and, uh, uh, and 11 are a bit different. They answer a question that was asked in this halaqah, but I, he's not here, unfortunately. He'll usually ask something in the halaqah, and I told him, just, just be patient, it'll come up. Because I talked about submission like 10, 15 times, and the concept of you, get, you, know, of you giving up your personal will uh, for the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not seeing, not putting anything uh, in your heart before His will subhanahu wa ta'ala, before what He commands you. He, he, talked, he asked, he said, what about, what about uh, you know, Izzat Nafis, right? That's what he said, what about Izzat Nafis, what about you know, your self-pride and self-dignity? Uh, Don't just wait, uh, it, it'll come. And it did, it does. In ayah number 10 and 11, it, it talks about that point. Because the question that comes up is, well, you're asking us to be very selfless and to be very humble and to lay ourselves down uh, yeah, and, uh, to, to the er as, as earthly as possible uh, in front of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, you know, to, to follow His command, to accept His will. But what about that urge inside of me to be the best and the greatest at everything? Uh, there's an instinct that we all possess inside where we want to be the highest, the greatest, the best. We want to be up in front of everyone and we want to be respected and, and held in high esteem and we want people to look at us in a certain way. There's all these needs that we have inside of us that, will, that go against the basic concept of, of submission. And if you're telling us the deen, is telling you that is saying or commanding that the most important thing that you can possibly possess or the most important thing you're going to do uh, is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala well I don't know how to do that if, uh, if, if my nafs is always asking for the, for the opposite so the ayah uh, talks about it immediately the ayah comes and it brings it up very very clearly and it gives you how it gives you a, a, a method in terms of how you're going to do it and, and what you're going to think about as you are doing it and that's why these two ayahs are very beautiful and the, the answer to the question that the, and it's funny because subhanAllah if you're thinking purely or just thinking about the concepts you, the, 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 the questions will come up and you'll find the Quran will answer them for you if you're just, if you're just patient you just keep on going with the ayah the, the Quran will come across and will answer all the questions that you have but what it requires uh, is, is for you to actually be thinking about what it is you're being told uh, right, you have to actually, you actually, you actually have to be um, uh, reflecting 
uh, upon and, and, and contemplating upon the topics or the ideas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, is, is presenting you with. But if you don't do that, then yeah, nothing seems, uh, and I think you brought up something similar, it seems like a story is being told. Yeah, it is. If you can, if you can connect the dots, and if you're thinking about what's being, to what's being talked about, then you will, uh, this will make a lot of sense to you. You won't feel that this is uh, disconnected or it's unorganized or it's all over the place. You actually feel this is, this is filling every gap that I have. It's answering every question that I, need, that, that I want to, to have answered. So it told us the two mindsets we need, gratitude and, 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 and personal insight. And now it's going to tackle that one issue that is of extreme importance, is that urge that we have inside, that desire to have izza. So we'll recite the ayat, inshallah, and then we'll you know, explain what they're, what they're saying, and uh, we'll go into some depth, inshallah, with the, with the meanings. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من كان يريد العزة فلله العزة جميعا so then the word is twice, al-izza, once it has a fatha at the beginning of it, at the end of it, and the second one has a dhamma. So man kana yuridu al-izzata, falillahi al-izzatu jami'a. Okay. Ilayhi yas'adu al-kalimu al-tayyib. Wal-amalu al-salihu yarfa'uh. وَالَّذِينَ يَمْكُرُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَكْرُ أُولَئِكَ هُوَ يَبُورٌ وَاللَّهُ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثم من نطفة ثم جعلكم أزواجا وما تحمل من أنثى ولا تضع إلا بعلمه Now the, uh, the part coming up next is a bit complicated. I'll read it once. Don't read after me. I'll read it once and then I'll try it again just to make sure everyone understands how to, how to say it. So the first one, So that's how it's a bit... Uh, uh, so there's a lot of ghunan. There's, a, there's, a, there's three memes that have a shadda on it in a row. So basically, you have to get all three uh, po properly. So I'm going I'm to read the first uh, part just to the, to the end of the of the sutr, end of the line, and uh, just to try to repeat that. Wama yu'ammaru min mu'ammar. Wala yunqasu min umurihi illa fi kitab. إن ذلك على الله يسير. Okay, so we'll inshallah explain these. Now, I number ten is, is the one that will take the most time, Allahu alam, because of the importance of the word. So the word izza in the Quran, it's not, it's, it's only in the Quran a few times. Um, probably one more time. Uh, 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 الَّذِينَ يَبْتَغُونَ عِنْدَهُمُ الْعِزَّةَ فَإِنَّ الْعِزَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا That's in Surah Nisa. So only just one more time where you actually have the, the, the word uh, coming, uh, presenting itself in the Quran like this. Uh, so it's there and it's here. And, and it has a different context there altogether. But here, it's, it's here, you know, in, in Surah Fatir it's there. And um, the word is very unique and it's an important word. From it we take the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Aziz, which is a very, uh, it's a very important name. Um, so when you categorize the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's different ways to categorize His names. There's a lot of different ways to categorize his names actually. Um, 
I like sometimes to categorize the names that have similar meanings and the names that are that stand out in terms of the meanings that they bring forward. I like to kind of have it in clumps. So, for example, uh, Ismullah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-alim, uh, the, the all-knowing. Under it, you have all these other names that are similar to it. And I've, I've given this example a few times just so you kind of get the hang of it. Al-Basir, the all-seeing, al-Samia, the all-hearing. Al-Latif, the one who knows the very... Uh, very very delicate things. Al-Khabir, the, the one who knows the things that aren't uh, 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 detectable by human with human senses, like something that is happening inside that we don't. So all these names have simple are fall under that big umbrella name Al-Alim, and they all have a similar meaning. And then you have the word name Al-Hakim, that is its own it's its own category because they all wise. <coughs> it comes with the uh, with knowledge, but it has its own importance. If you took out the name Al-Hakim, uh, <coughs> From, from his name subhanahu wa ta'ala there would be something missing we'd either have to um, conclude it on ourselves by ourselves like you have to come to the conclusion of that name being proper or you would have someone challenge saying well he never said he was al-hakim I mean he never said that everything he does has a purpose and is actually helpful which kind of kills out a lot of, uh, of, under, of the understandings of the deen so he told us to do this is that going to help us or not it's one thing to say he told us to do it should we do it or not we should do it but is it going to be helpful for us in dunya and akhirah well if he's not al-hakim I don't know <coughs> but if he is al-hakim then I have no doubt about it of course uh, of course and I'm good of course yeah, uh, yeah. <coughs> if he's al-hakim then I have no problem so there's names that have, al-aziz is one of those names al-aziz if you look at the different meanings actually when you look at the scholars and they try, they try to explain the meaning you'll we have at least 12 different def definitions, very, very different. So it took me some time to, to look into the actual, what, what, what is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us in, in, by using the name Al-Aziz. So in the Arabic language, إِذَا عَزَّ الشَّيْءِ Something is uh, uh, performed the action of Az, meaning it's hard for you to reach it. That's what it actually means. Az uh, matlabuhu uh, means what he's asking for is beyond his reach. Something that we can't get for him. I can't. I can't provide it for him. He can't provide it for himself. Az anhu. It's it's one step beyond him. So and and no matter where, how you use the different derivatives of izza, no matter, no matter how you use these different derivatives, that point will always be a part of the meaning. So that's the only common meaning that you find in all the different usages of the derivatives of Izza. So if you take that, that one uh, uh, meaning in common, that one, that one point that, that seems to be there all the time, and you use it to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name in Aziz, then He is the unreachable. Well, yeah, maybe uh, that, that makes sense from a, a you know, a, a, uh, literally or in a physical man mean, uh, manner or meaning but let's take it from a uh, from a figurative way of looking so he's the, he's the unfathomable subhanahu wa ta'ala you can't reach him uh, even mentally you, you can never never really uh, uh, work him out <coughs> in your life you can sometimes you, you'll, you'll be uh, surrounded by people and this, these are these are this is where social skills become important so uh, as, you, as you grow up you start to be able to read people you could tell uh, that this person is happy upset uh, you know, uh, sometimes even sincere, not sincere, is hiding something, isn't, depending on how, you know, good your social skills are, to be honest, and how much you've thought about these things. Some men are completely dense, and they'll live with their wives for 50 years, and they still won't be able to pick up on the simple, simple, or, or the very clear signs that she's I'm happy or wants something, and they fight forever, like you never stop fighting as couples, because they just don't, they're not good at uh, the social skills, they're kind of reading people. So... But those who do this uh, can work people out. Psychologists love doing this. Uh, you know, they, they can they study you for a bit, listen to you talk, ask a few things. I mean, they can break it down. Okay, you're like, and it's actually very uh, uh, humiliating. You should do it. But everyone should do it, by the way, at least once. And you go to a psychologist. Let, let, let them let them break it down to your basics, just for your own sake. Because if you don't have the insight, they'll give it to you. <laughs> psychologists will give you the insight. They'll hand it to you. Here, 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 here's, here's your thing. And you'll, and, you, and you'll hate it at the beginning, you'll hate the psychologist, and then and you'll be all like, no, that's not me. And then you'll be like, oh, that's exactly me. And he was right. But, but I, it's actually I'm worse than that. They actually didn't get the whole part. <laughs> they don't have the whole the full picture. And it's, it's helpful. It, it humbles you, it brings you down to earth, and it teaches you to actually improve yourself and, and, and think of things in a, better, in a better way. Anyways, so can we work out God? This, this, this is the question that, you know, I'm trying to, this is a philosophical, philosophical question I'm, I'm presenting. Can we figure him out? Can we figure out what he's about? Or what? Right? This is the thing. Well, some people think they can, and that's why mulhidin. That's why we have, we have uh, atheists, and people don't believe. They think they figured out. If not God, they figured out the person who made up God. This is why he made him up. Made up for this and this. Trying to figure things out. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in ayat, wherever He's talking about something that is not explainable through the simple laws of physics or the laws of the universe, 
or sometimes it's a part of the, of the explanation that is just that's how, why it is or that's how it is he'll use his name Al Aziz and, and, and follow it in the Quran if you want like, you follow it and you'll find it all the time whenever he talks about punishment Al Aziz they think that he, most scholars would comment and say oh he says his name Al Aziz because it's a name of strength and that works out for punishment I don't think that's why I think he used the name Al Aziz when he talks about punishment because we can never understand why it is that he has to punish people at the end, we don't understand why. why. Why is there a need for punishment? Why does it have to be punishment? Just, just let that go. That's what kind of Allah Aziz and Hakima. He's the most wise. And there's a part of this that you'll never, never really understand. You can't figure him out, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give up on that specific part. Figuring out his essence. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, you can figure out his sharia. You can understand his words. You understand his laws. They, they make sense. But when trying to figure him out, and try to go to that one step where it's just not, it's not possible. Uh, no one can really, uh, but the more you understand him, Subhanahu wa Taala, the higher you are. Uh, that's why you know, when you take the, and I love this, when the Prophet وسلم, on the day of uh, when he, Mi'raj, when he was up there, when the sidra, when the you know that place where no one else arrived but him, وسلم, it was uh, smothered by what? By what it was smothered with? N we don't know. No one. He doesn't even know. No one knows. No one knows. Even the Prophet وسلم, didn't ex couldn't explain it. It was amazing, but he, even in his, in his Afsah al-Arab, he had the most, uh, the most keen ability to, to articulate things, but he couldn't articulate what, what happened, because what happened then was, was unfathomable. It was unreachable, it was unexplainable. And that's where Izzah comes in. So that's the concept of, of his name, Al-Aziz. I just want to, because if you understand Al-Aziz from this, then you'll understand the, the word here and why it's used. So we all want to be, uh, to have Izzah. To be unreachable at a, to a certain extent. To be high up enough so that we, you can't uh, humiliate me. Uh, uh, or let, let's take the, the simplest meaning out of the word. If you have izza, that means uh, you're unreachable. Let's say this physically. That means I can't just come and take you and do what I want with you. I right? just to kind of make, let's understand it in the most simple way possible. If you have some izza, that means I can't just come and take you by the by the collar and just do whatever I want with you. Because if you if, if I can do that, then you have no izza. Because it means you're, you're, you're reachable. You're always reachable. I can always get you. And not in a, not in a nice way, but in, 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 in a humiliating way. So if you want Izza, what you're hoping for is not to be that. Is to be. And then you hope for other, to have Izza in other ways as well. You know, to be, uh, to, to be held in high esteem and to be respected and to be in high... And we all want that. And that's fine. So what he's saying here, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because that is the opposite of submission, basically. Uh, for you uh, uh, to submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the opposite is to follow izza is to look for become is, is to build upon uh, you know izza trying to trying to get yourself higher and higher so they're, they're, they're kind of opposite concepts they're, they're not necessarily opposite in practice they don't necessarily uh, it's not like they can't, can't coexist in the heart and the mind of a human being but uh, they may seem like they're, they're working the opposite direction if not understood properly and, and it comes to your mind well I want, you know, I want more I want, I'm ambitious I want to do this I want to do that I want to be someone of, of value want, okay so he says Man kana izza. he who wants izza. you want to have izza? yes I do uh, admit it to yourself and admit it to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so don't lie no I don't want izza. I want. no you do of course you do it's normal, it's natural, that's the, just, if you don't want Izza, then you should see a psychiatrist as well. <laughs> because, because it's not normal for you not to want any form of Izza, that makes no sense, of course you want some Izza. Uh, but, but what he's saying is, man kana yurid al-Izza, falillahi al-Izza tu jami'ah. Well, all of it exists in his hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of it, jami'ah, all of it. All of it is owned by God, all of it. So it's like you're out there shopping for something, and it's only provided by one, in one source. There's, you can't buy it from a different source. No one else makes this. <laughs> no one else manufactures what you're looking for. It's only one source. At the end, you have to go to that source. Or, you're going to end up with fakes. Right? You, you'll have something, but it'll be a fake. It won't be, it won't be the thing you're looking for. It, it's not really what you want. It may look like it. It may seem like it. it may even be, you may, may even be able to pull it off for 60 years that you have it, but you don't really have it. Because you didn't take it from its actual source. And all it takes is a moment of true... Yeah, and of truth, where it's exposed that you don't have, really have it. You don't have Izzah. You actually don't have it. Um, war exposes it very nicely. Not that I hope that I wish that upon anyone, but war exposes that very nicely. It exposes all the people who had it, thought they had Izzah, but don't really, don't really have it. Or they, or they sought it out, sought it from a different uh, from a source than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they built their izzah based on the fact that they had money, they had wealth, they had uh, land, they had children uh, who grew up to be men who had more children. Who have, you know, so now they are, they are people who have strength, they have people behind them to, you know, to, to do what they want. And they believe that this is their izzah. 
or they're taking it from a from a regime or from a you know a, a political stance. So they're taking it, and all it takes is for you know example as war to come and completely destroy that. And a person who once had ten kids and, and, and huge pieces of land in whose house, just sitting on a, uh, you know, the stump of a tree that he once owned, with nothing, left with nothing, right? So the question is, where did where did he have his where did he um, acquire his izzah from to begin with? If it's from Allah subhanahu wa taala, then he still has it. And if it's from someone else, then then he's then he's lost. It's a very it's a very it's a very subtle point. It's a really important one. If you want izzah, then he owns it all. So you shouldn't be looking for it anywhere else. You shouldn't be looking for it in the eyes of people, or in the mouths of people, or in the pockets of people or in the opinions of people or you shouldn't be looking for it in dunya and yeah, in, in, in uh, possessions and in, uh, if you're looking for it there uh, you'll get something that looks like it and you can probably pull it off to get people to believe they actually have it but life can easily expose it it's the only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why because some and I'm going to give you an example someone whose izzah only comes from Allah someone whose self-value Let's just let's take Izzah and kind of break it down to something simple. Uh, self-value and self-esteem only comes from the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's not interested in what other people say or do. He doesn't really care that much how much he has or what he has or where he is. In it. All he cares about is that he is walking down the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to walk down. And he knows that he's good in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes. And that is the Izzah that he carries in his heart. That I will continue to stand by his word subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what happens. And I'll never, uh, and I'll never do anything else. And that's someone who is, is, is fulfilled on the inside. So his izz is on the inside. So even if you take him and you torture him and you mistreat him, they'll still stand. And, if, and, and we have, and we have examples of that. Whenever you watch a, you know, a, a, a drama movie where there's a hero of some sort, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be a superhero. He's a regular hero. Usually these people are tortured at some point, right? If someone's tortured and starts to grovel and, and, and beg and breaks down, that's, that movie doesn't, that's a very confusing movie if this person is the hero. It doesn't work. The, 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 what you're looking for is someone who's going to stand their ground even when they're being mistreated. And, and, and the way that the movie shows it to you, because this is the narrative that we carry as human beings, by the way, that the true izza is not in possessions or anything of dunya. It's a value, it's a value that you have, right? And, and that's something even the disbelievers agree. It's a value. You, you stand by the, the righteousness, right? Uh, or you stand by justice. And if you stand by justice, even if you're mistreated, you'll, you'll still, you'll go down with your head held, held high. You'll go down, you'll fall down, but you're still, you'll held, your head will be held high. So uh, this is what he's saying, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Izza is with him and what he teaches in what he commands. So if you stand by it, then that's, that, that value will always be there. Even if you end up not having what you want, even if people don't see it, or people don't acknowledge it, or they don't, it doesn't matter. Man kani uridu izza. It's, it's very interesting because it's, it's validating your pursuit of Izzah. <laughs> I understand what I'm saying? He validated your pursuit of Izzah. He didn't say, no, you shouldn't want it. He could have said, Man but this is a problem. You shouldn't want Izzah. You shouldn't be looking for this. No, no, you want it? Okay. فَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا He's Al-Aziz subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if he is Al-Aziz, so he owns all the Izzah in the world, then pursue it through him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He owns it all, so let him grant you whatever he wants to grant you from it. And may, the, may, may your izza be based on the amount of attachment you have to his teaching and to his command, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to his love. And that, and that's, that's the most sensible way to, for me to put it, or that's the best way I can put it for you. So he goes on, he kind of, and he details it a bit more. He says, إِلَيْهِ يَصْعَدُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبِ So, how do I do that, Ya Rab? So know this, all good words, al-kalim, al-kalim means uh, 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 sentences or words or sayings or anything that is verbalized. Ilayhi yasad, so to him will uh, ascend, al-kalim al-tayyib, all uh, kind words or kind uh, sayings or, uh, things, or kind things that you'll say. Wal-amalu salihu and good deeds and proper deeds and the deeds that he commanded us to do, yarfa'u. Yarfa has two meanings here, and I uh, and I, I think it's really interesting. One of the meanings is that he subhanahu wa taala also ascends it, he accepts it, and takes it up uh, upwards. Another meaning is that these actions they cause the these good words to ascend even higher. So, um, meaning, who is the when he says yarfa, uh, he it will he will uh, ascend it or send it upwards, right? So who is who is he when he says yarfa? Because he didn't he didn't really specify here. 
So who is he? Is he as in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will ascend the actual deeds, al-amal salih the word before it? Or is it that the amal salih these good deeds, are, are the ones who are going to ascend the words that, he, that, that were said before? So as if you say a good word, and that will uh, ascend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then if you f uh, follow up with those good words with good deeds, then it will even take it higher. It will, make, it will give it even more, even more uh, value in his eyes subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so either way is fine to understand the, uh, you can understand the ayah either way. The more traditional way is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is the one who ascends it. But it, it works either way. So it's a nice way of looking at it. Yeah. Could it go back to those who want his as well? So, yeah, the person. Like yeah, yeah. So the third way of understanding is al amal salih, the the good deeds. Yarfa'uhu means will ascend the person, the person status itself, and that's my favorite way of understanding it. So the two ones, I, the two times uh, ways I explained at the beginning, or things you'll find in the books of tafsir. The number first one much more. The third way is the way I, I, I kind of see it to be, uh, which is less uh, common in the books of tafsir, but I find it to be much, make a bit more sense in terms of the uh, of the context of the verse. So ilayhi yasadu al all good words will ascend to him, and then good deeds will ascend your status. That will, that's what will take you up. You want to be have izza, it's good deeds that will, 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 will bring your status upwards. Because that's what izza means. Izza means you have to be unreachable, to high up. Well, it's amal salih that will take you high up. And good, and good words, they go immediately up to, up, up. A, 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 kind, a kind word of, of compassion and, and love and, uh, and, and, and advice and help will ascend immediately up to him. And you follow that up with some good deeds and that will ascend your status and take you up. It's nothing else. It's not, it's not possession, it's not money, it's not... Um, um, social status is nothing else. Uh, which is very, very beautiful uh, for him to use the concept of, of a kind word. Looking for izza? Try a kind word. Try saying something nice. Try saying something that is tayyib, uh, that will bring happiness. Tayyib uh, is a very, the word tayyib is another specific Arabic word that will take a bit of time to explain. It comes from taba. Right, uh, Taba is one of the names of uh, of Medina, right? Taba, uh, and then it was we call it today Taiba, but it was initially it was it was Taba. Taba shay when something is, uh, is it, it performed Tab, that means it is um, it is in a in a, in a, in a rounded way um, just good. It's just something that is working. It's not uh, it's not rotten. Right, it's the opposite of, of something rotting. So Taba Shay means that's why if, if another name before Ladina Amanu Amil Salihati Tuba Lahum. Tuba Lahum from the same uh, same root. Meaning only only good things will come to them. They will live a good life. But the word good you know is a is a really rip off of an explanation or a translation of the word because a a, a, tayyibah, a life that is tayyib, I mean a life where the person who's living it uh, is, is ha has a certain level of happiness in it. Why? Because he has things figured out. He knows why he's doing what he's doing. He knows what's, why things are happening to him and he knows where he's going. So he's in content. Right? He's, not, he's, not, uh, he's not objecting, he's not disgruntled based on what's happening. So here, الكريم الطيب, a word that is in, in nature, it's beneficial, it's helpful, it's good. Regardless of, 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 of exactly what, uh, uh, what type of word it is. And then good deeds will ascend the person's, uh, the person's status. Like if you yeah. want to respect, uh, talk nicely, sweet words. But I find some, sometimes people talking, who talk nicely, nicely. People I think he's an idiot, he, you know. Yeah, you know, sure. Well, that not that the whole point of the uh, of the ayah? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, th I, think, I think that's the whole point of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using that here to begin with. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for izzah, well, he's telling you to do the thing that when, when you usually do, you, you feel like you're not getting izzah. <laughs> like he's telling you to do the thing that you, when you do it, you end up, it doesn't seem that you're getting izzah from it, but you actually are. You just can't see it. Oh. So... The reason that he used the kalim al-tayyib here, which is, which is kind words, that are easy words, because usually when you do that, you speak nicely to everyone, people walk all over you. So you think that you have no izzah, but he's saying, he's saying the opposite. No, no, it's, it's when you say these things and you follow up with good, with good deeds, because again, if he didn't say good deeds at the end, it could be horribly misunderstood. This ayah this, 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 could be completely butchered in tafsir if, if you don't use deeds after. If you just, because if you're just selling words, then that's, that's basically hypocrisy. That's basically exactly what hypocrisy is. You say all the right things, and then you go do everything wrong from behind. <laughs> 
So it's having both. But he used specifically here kalimut tayyib because usually that is uh, it's not the uh, uh, meaning. It's, it's not the evid It's not the sign of someone who has izza. Because you don't have to when you're when you're a king or you're a, a, you know a minister you don't have to speak nicely to anyone because you're you know you're, you're the leader everyone has to listen to if people don't like it they can go they can get lost in Arabic we say il babi fawad jamal right the door will <laughs> and a camel can come through the door you know so it's big enough for you to leave as well if you want to leave but 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 he's saying that here's the opposite subhanahu wa taala if you want izza he owns it all so try good words and follow up with good deeds and that will arrive, take deep, up your study. Yeah, so it's the deep meaning of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so because, we, because we're, we're commanded to do that. Be, speak, مَا كَانَ الرِّفْقُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَهُ وَلَا نُزِعَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا شَانَهُ This is the hadith the Prophet ﷺ told us. Ali ﷺ said, مَا كَانَ الرِّفْقُ فِي شَيْءٍ If you take tenderness and put it in anything, it will decorate it and make it beautiful. You take out tenderness out of anything, it will destroy it and become disgusting. ما كان الرفق في شيء إلا زانه. You put tenderness in anything, it'll make it beautiful, it'll decorate, make it something that you like seeing and, and dealing with. You take it out of anything, it'll become disgusting. Something. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, he, he's looking at it from a figurative, uh, figurative way. Yeah. Exactly. Well, all right. But no, the point is, is worthy because uh, because kalimut uh, tayyib is not the uh, is not the sign of someone who has izzah. As, long, as far as we can tell in dunya. But and, uh, as what he's telling us, I own Izzah, and that is where Izzah is. It's in, it's in, it's in tender uh, speech and it's being kind, it's in kindness, and then it's in following that up with good deeds, and that will ascend you, and that will give you Izzah. But you have to go. That's why the, uh, so the last part of the, uh, the, uh, the ayah, وَالَّذِينَ يَمْكُرُونَ السَّيِّئَةِ And those who plot bad deeds, and he used the word plot. Right? He didn't say they would do bad deeds, because that becomes too general, there's no meaning to it. Plotting. Those who seek izza in the world are always plotting. So they get ahead. If they do things openly, then it's, 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 the hand is red and there's nothing. Uh, but if you plot, you find ways to bring someone down and, and get someone out of the way, then you can, get, you can get ahead and get yourself in a higher way. If you can talk badly about someone and get others not to like that person, then you've removed your competitor and now you're going to get one step ahead. وَالَّذِينَ يَمْكُرُونَ السَّيِّئَةِ Those who continuously plot bad deeds. Because those are the ones who end up with the false izzah that we see in the dunya. It's the ones who are always plotting these bad stuff, isn't it? Isn't that literally what happens every day? Yeah, and you, uh, the people who are up there, how do they get up there? It was just granted to them? Oh, it's been decades of lying. Every and, discipline, yeah. art, music, politics. Yeah, especially politics, right? How many, how many people have they bag, uh, stabbed in the back and how many times have they lied and how many... وَالَّذِينَ يَمْكُرُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ For them is a, is a um, severe punishment. وَمَكْرُوا أُولَٰئِكَ هُوَ يَبُورٌ And here's the point. The, uh, I brought that. And they're plotting, the plotting of those people. هُوَ يَبُورٌ He will uh, uh, deem uh, useless at the end. بَوَار means something is, is, uh, uh, disintegrates. I mean, it turns into nothing. Uh, so earth that had Ardun uh, Bawar means an earth that used to have uh, plants and now has nothing on it. Everything is, is gone. So Makru Ula'ik Hu Yabur and the plotting of those people, Ula'ik of those people, Hu Yabur, he subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn into nothing. You just have to be you just have to be patient about it. You have to, you have to give it some time. Okay. So very, a very, uh, to me, a very interesting ayah, or a very deep ayah, in the meaning that it is offering, offering all of us. And it, it answers a question that is very reasonable, a very reasonable question when we talk about submission. What about, what about my, my desire and need to get ahead and to be great and to be, well, look for it in the, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the, in, in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in, and in doing good deeds and good things. And the, these are the values that this society has actually picked up in a most way. Meaning the, the best of us uh, here is the, the kind, the most, the most kind and the most tender, and that's what he's saying, Subhanahu wa Taala, here for us as well. So it's kind of weird when we find Muslims who, who are you know professionals at doing the opposite, uh, who are professional at being uh, crude and and, and, and rude and, you know, and disrespectful to others, um, trying to get higher and higher in the wrong way. The ayah after that, Wallahu khalaqakum min turab. So it's a bit of a, uh, it's a continuation of the ayah that we read before, but it's a reminder. You're looking for izza. All right, now, let, let, let's, let's, let's talk about it for a moment. You were created from the soil of the earth, dirt. Thummam and nutfa, and then you were a small uh, piece of sperm or speck of sperm. Just one of them, uh, not visible to the, to the eye even. Thumma ja'alakum azwaja, and then you were, you were paired up. وَمَا تَحْمِلُ مِنْ أُنثَى وَلَا تَضَعُوا إِلَّا بِعِلْمِهِ And every time a female uh, carries or is pregnant, 
uh, he knows about it and every time she gives birth to a uh, to a new unit of life he knows about it subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ma yu'ammar min mu'ammar yu'ammar means granted life or granted an age to live a certain period of time to live wa ma yu'ammar min mu'ammar and there is no living thing that is given life to live that's, that's what the ayah actually means. There are different qira'at where it's ma yu'ammiru min mu'ammirin. But for us it's ma yu'ammaru min mu'ammirin in the uh, passive, uh, passive sense of the, of, of the sentence. So no living thing is granted a period of time to live on this earth. وَلَا يُنْقَصُ مِنْ عُمُرِهِ Nor is his period of time being decreased. There's no living thing that's given a certain time to live. Or decrease from that time to live, illa fi kitab, except it's all in, uh, it's all recorded. We, we say kitab, we say it's in a book. I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't. I, I vote against using that translation from now on because it, because it's misleading. Uh, sometimes people mis misunderstand what that means. Uh, the concept of kitab and and marqum is, is recorded. So that's all it is. It's recorded, meaning it's known beforehand. Meaning this is not new knowledge to him, Subhanahu wa Taala. He knew it. It's actually recorded somewhere. So it's not something that uh, he's figuring out now or finding a, out about now. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's written as in uh, it was forced upon this living. Even though in, in this sense it is, but that's not the point of talking about something being in kitab. Something that is in kitab or in loh mahfud or, or, or all those other words that are used in the Quran. The point of it is not to say that this was predestined in the sense that you had no contribution to it. No, it's saying that it's recorded. I mean, this is prior knowledge. It's not new. You're not surprising anyone. You're not doing something that wasn't uh, already known that was going to happen uh, to begin with. And there's a difference between the two things. The difference between saying something was predestined in the sense that you had no contribution to it. It was going to happen regardless of what you did. Which is a very simplistic and very ignorant way of looking at uh, uh, events in the universe. Uh, or un and understanding that everything that's happening, happened is going to happen, is already recorded. I think he knows about it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how do you, how do you kind of... Um, uh, break even uh, with, with these two concepts. How, how, do you, how do you understand that he, it's all recorded but it's, uh, but it's not uh, against my will or it's not something that I, yeah, this is like the question I, got, I get the most probably but from, from not, not from the younger age group, from the older age group so from whenever you talk with people in the 50s and up, uh, this is the question that they have. And it's funny that you've been around 50, 50 years you never actually figured that out how, how, I don't understand how do you function as a Muslim uh, if this is to you something that you don't uh, understand properly, if you still struggle with understanding the basics of Qada and Qadr or understanding the, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'm going to offer you a quick uh, way of looking at it, just, just because why? Because what he's focusing here, because you may, you may read this verse and, and not know what he's trying to tell you, right? Like what, what he's trying to tell me here, I created me from I created you from, uh, from the soil of the earth and then from sperm and then uh, you were made into, small, into couples and every time there was a, a female was pregnant and every time it gave birth, it was all known and every time life was granted to a living thing and every time life was taken away from a living thing it was all recorded. So what are you talking about? He's talking about his knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala here. The focus here is just knowledge, but you can, you can easily miss that if you, if you explain kitab as book. And then that's, <laughs> that's the end of it. It's, it's a book. Why, 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 you know, so if it wasn't written in a book, you would be okay with all this? Or are you, are you bothered that it's in a book specifically? So, so this is the question that you, know, you can bring up. So if it wasn't written in a book, so I, remember I, had, this, I had this conversation once in a, a discussion, discussion with a lot of people once. It's like, it's all written, then there's no point of doing anything. All right. So what bothers you is the written part, right? It's written, that's what's bothering you, that it's written? Yeah, because it's already written. So let's say that it's not written. It's not written. He just knows it's a pound but it's not written. What, what about then? Does it still bother you? Like, I don't know. Well, think about it. If it's not written, it's, it's not written anywhere. Your life is not written anywhere. But he knows about it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In whatever essence, he can know things, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he's valium. But it's not written. Everyone seemed to say, yeah, 99% of the time, I feel totally happy now if it's not written. So the actual writing of something is what bothered you? What if I told you that it's written, but no one ever saw it? Not one living thing has ever seen it. What about then? See, you're still not sure. Well, that's the reality of the issue. What's written has never been seen. Um, what, what the malaika see is what the malaika are allowed to see that can change. Uh, there's Ummul Kitab that changes. 
these th there are things that change all the time. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the malaika uh, permission to change based on, uh, on things that people do. So if you're someone who's do salat rahim, if you're always you know, uh, strengthening the, 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 the relations of kinship, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you more time to live or gives you more barakah in your life and the malaika get to put that in. But this is not what he's talking about. There's another record, Loh al mahfuz that no one saw. No one, not even the Prophet No one saw, no one saw this. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's exclusively to him. So really whether it's written or not, it doesn't make a difference. So that's one point, just kind of put that on the side. So it shouldn't bother you that it's written, in case it's bothering you that it's, you know, it's written. The other point is, um, if he didn't know what was going to happen next, then I would argue very strongly and very clearly that he's not worthy of worship. But had he not know, does he, if he doesn't know what I'm going to do next, I would argue that I, he's not worth it, worth worship. I'm not going to worship him. Because if, I can, if he doesn't know what's going to happen next, then there is a very small but existing, a very small but existing possibility that I can surprise him. And if I can surprise him, then I can beat him. Because it's very simple. The problem of ignorance why is ignorance, why is ignorance a, a negative value in the universe? If you don't know what's going to happen next, you don't know what to prepare for. You can be beaten. You can be taken out. You can be de everything you can be worked for can be destroyed. You can be killed. You can lose everything. Why? Because you don't know what's coming next. If you knew everything that was going to happen to you until the end of your life, how calm would you be right now? Yeah. I know. I've, I know exactly what's going to happen next. I've, I already know it. So. You're d no anxiety, no, no depression. There's no point of being depressed. Oh, I'm not going to make it. I know I'm not going to make it. I've already seen it. It's not, not going to happen. There's no point of me bothering myself with whether I'm going to make it or not because I've already seen it. It's not happening. So I can just enjoy what I have right now. If I know that I'm going to get sick at a certain point, I'm going to lose a loved one, I'm not going to... If I know about it, then there's this strength that comes with knowledge and this calmness. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't know everything and, you can, and we as a human race can possibly surprise Him, then it makes no sense for us to even worship and to begin with. So he has to know everything, and he does, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, third point. Is knowledge a, an effective uh, attribute? Does it affect the action? So, chickens lay eggs. Now, whether you know chicken lay, the chickens lay eggs or they don't, doesn't affect the fact that chickens will continue to lay eggs. Doesn't make a difference. Ilm, sifa ghair mu'athira. It's an attribute that doesn't really affect action. It's just knowledge. Uh, if you know that they do it, then good. And if you don't know, they're still going to do it. Knowledge doesn't affect something. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He knows what's going to happen next, it's, His knowledge doesn't affect whether you do it or you don't do it. That is, that is your choice that you're taking. Third point. Fourth point. Just to kind of bring, just so you think about these things will help you with understanding. Because if, you, if, you if these things aren't clear to you, then you can't really enjoy this ayah. This, this is the part you can't enjoy the ayah. The ayah becomes... It doesn't mean anything to you because you, you weren't able to enjoy the fact that he's telling you, look, from creation, from the time life was created from, from dirt, from soil. That first cell found its way into the boiling uh, volcanic uh, waters of Mexico and moving forward until pregnant women gave birth and people lived lives and, and less lives and longer lives. All that, it's all recorded. Inna dhalika ala Allah yaseer indeed upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's very easy. It's very soon. Nothing. It's nothing. It took nothing. It took nothing at all. It's all recorded. If you, if you don't enjoy that part, then you don't really feel he is Aziz, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why I should definitely listen. That's why Izz is, he's telling you Izz is with me. It's not with anyone else. How do I know that, Ya Rab? You told me Izz is with you. You told me that I should speak kindly and continue doing good deeds that will ascend me and that people who plot evil will not make it. Well, how do I know that? Well, because everything from the time creation until, until now, everything is already recorded. I know how it's going to alter. I know how it's going to turn out. See, he who laughs at the end will laugh the most. I know what this is going to look like at the end. So just play this with the way I tell you, and you'll be, be the one with Izza at the end, and they won't. Just, just play it the way I tell you, or else you're going to have something fake, and then you'll when Izza really matters. See, when Izza matters on the Day of Judgment, right, and you don't have it, and you don't have it, that's where, it's gonna, that's where things are going to com be completely worthy. Yeah, that's where you're going to wish that you, did, you had no Izza in dunya, and had a speck of it, Yawm al -Qiyama. So he knows how it's going to all play out. Oh, the fourth point, just so I don't forget. Our knowledge is, is uh, when, we say, when, when I can say for sure what's going to happen in the future, um, it has to be programmed. Right? Something has to be programmed. It has to be, I press a button, and I tell you before this button, I'm a programmer, before I press this button, when I press it, this is what's going to happen next. 100%. Then I press it and it happens. Only reason that it happens is because I programmed it. Now when we don't know what's going to happen next, we do, there's, a whole, there's a whole science that is called statistics and epidemiology, where we can predict with some level of certainty 
never 100%, never 100%, that this is probably going to happen. And, and, and we're right, by, by the way, like insurance companies are making multi-billion dollar, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a multi-billion dollar industry that is literally sucking the money out of everything because they just study human behavior in groups and they can predict what's going to happen next and they can give you, make you pay $250 of insurance for your car every month and know exactly how much money they're going to pocket every single year based on it. And they're very rarely wrong unless some, some musibah catastrophe happens, unless the, a, a, a tornado comes. And even with that, they still, they factor all that in. You know, how many tornadoes happen on an average every 10 years? They factor all that in, all that data. But unless something really weird, happen, weird happens, like a, I don't know, like a, a comet coming and hits the Earth, then, 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 then they're going to be fine. They're going to make their money. I think that has no statistics. Yeah, they have no, they, 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 well, it's every 65 million years that a comet seems to hit, so I think we should be good for, the, for another bit. So they don't know exactly what's going to happen next. And so if human beings can possess that type of knowledge, right, for things that are supposedly not programmed, then for you to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't know what's going to happen next unless it's programmed is saying that his knowledge is like ours. See, if I take a small car and I turn it, and I say, okay, this car, I, 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 I have the knowledge that this car is going to bump into that wall over there. I let it go and it does. The reason it does is because that car had no choice. That's my level of knowledge. That's how far I can go. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though you can choose whatever you want, he knows what wall you're going to bump into because that's why he's God and you're not. You see, if he didn't, if he needed things to be programmed, then the level of knowledge that you possess and the level of knowledge that he possesses is the same. And why is he God? And why is he better than me? If we have the same type of knowledge, then I can figure out to how to obtain whatever strengths he obtained, then I can be God. And it's astaghfirullah, But I'm just trying to explain, explain you to the point. So yes, of course, uh, we only know what's going to happen next if we can program it. And he knows what's going to happen next, even when it's not programmed. And that's why he's God. And you're not programmed, you can do whatever you want, and he still knows what's going to happen next, because he is God, and that's, that's, that's why he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are not. And we're, and we're the simple servants who just try to take whatever small amounts of knowledge that we can and, and, and build on it. And, it, and it's amazing uh, what we were able to do in a, you know, with 150 years of, uh, of knowledge. Right? It's amazing what we've, we've achieved and what we're continuing to achieve. So, and it's a speck in his, uh, his uh, ocean. Is it 50? Okay. Okay, I, I, I was going to finish uh, here anyways. Uh, I was going to stop at, uh, at this ayah. I'm going to end with that, inshallah. Uh, the reason being that if you start from Ayah Bahran, then you enter a whole, and I have to read at least three verses after that, and that's going to take forever. So we'll just, uh, we'll start that, inshallah, uh, next week. Now, next week, we're not running next week because there's a, a lecture that's happening next week. Uh, there's some type of, uh, what is it, the uh, extravaganza or something that they do. Winter events that they're doing. So uh, we're going to have to uh, cancel a few. I, to, I canceled my Saturday one, so Saturday won't run next week. And Sunday we could, we couldn't. Uh, out of the uh, willingness of not to clash with anyone, I'm not going to do it next week. I'm just going to... Sorry? Yeah, turn it off. Yeah, turn it off. Yeah. And, and, and edit that last part out. <laughs>